This is a residential water meter. Uh, this particular one is an I Pearl. That is I P E R L, and it's made by the Census Company. Uh, this is one of the new style of water meters. It's becoming very popular in the United States, not just the Census but other manufacturers. What makes it different from 20-year-old meters is that it's all plastic. Now, I mean, there's some electronics inside of it, but Essentially, it's an all-plastic meter. Historically, in the United States, water meters have been bronze or brass. Uh, in the older years, you saw some cast iron meters, and they all had moving parts in them. The water actually moved various diaphragms or pistons or propellers that caused the totalizer to move. It was a digital totalizer like in a 20-year-old car, maybe a 30-year-old car, where the digits would go around 1 through 0 through 9 and bump the next digit and click it 1, and then it, it would count up, so to speak. Well, moving things inside of a water environment are never good. So this meter, meter is a magnetic flow meter. It's electrically powered by a 20-year internal battery. The entire meter has a design life of 20 years. This is a good meter. I mean, there's no moving parts. It's all plastic. But one thing Census Corporation or any other corporation was, has been able to do is to figure out how to handle freezing up of water inside the meter. This meter was taken from a house it's about a month old actually in uh, central Pennsylvania the northern part of it anyway and it has totalized 4,571 gallons. And maybe you see that. And it totalizes down to a hundredth of a gallon, which is a, a good feature in a water meter because it's important to catch a leaking faucet. That is, it's important for the water company. To record the water, uh, used a really low rate. Typically, a mechanical meter would begin to lose resolution at lower flows due to wear inside the meter, wear, wear of the components inside the meter. This meter has an internal register. It also has a connection, as most meters do these days, for an outside reader, perhaps a radio reader, a touch reader, in the event there's still meter man walking around, rather than needing to write down the reading on the meter, he will touch the remote mounted sensor, it'll read the meter, it'll internally, the the, the, the handheld device will internally record the reading, uh, do a thousand houses, take it back to the office, download it, and automatically calculate everybody's bill. I'm going to try to tear this thing apart and see what makes it tick. The first thing I'm going to do is try to attack these end fittings and have a little bit of play in them. Now th this does not, this is where the pipe connects, but this retainer seems to have a little bit of play. This one doesn't, at least I can't move it by my fingers. Normally water, residential water meters in any way are hard to get into because the seller, the water company, doesn't want uh, 
customer is defeating the meter. Uh, it used to be that this remote connection actually just fed a counter mounted the outside the house. And it was easy for the customer to di just disconnect the wire for 28 days and then hook it back up. Actually, the newer meters with outside registers or outside tr transmitting devices periodically reach down electrically and read the setting from the internals of the meter. So I'm going to turn the camera off and see what happens when I put a wrench on these. I grabbed each end with a pair of vice grips, held the meter itself in a vice, got about a quarter turn fairly easily, and this little green band here popped out. So that really didn't do anything that I can see. I'm not sure what the green band did what its function was other than decorative. I guess I'll have to put it back in the vise and use a little more force. After some more twisting, this thing seems, it does not seem to be threaded on here, but it seems that I've dislodged it considerably. And I'll pry a little bit more. Now I would guess, since this thing contains a 20-year lithium battery that there's probably some safety concerns about that. So now we've got the end cap off. The lighting is not so good. See the bore of the, the that is the shape of the hole inside? It tapers and becomes a rectangle. Now, the water moving through here is nominally a conductor. Most drinking water is a conductor. A mo so, they, using the magnet, oh, I inadvertently removed the uh, sensor reading. I've now removed the top. Uh, using the battery, they've wrapped a coil of wire around uh, this throat or narrowed down section, established a magnetic field, and put some stainless steel or tantalum or some exotic metal contacts in touching the water flow. Water flows. Magnetic field generates a, a voltage. That's their basic generator theory. Measure the voltage, and you can measure the velocity. The velocity and the voltage are directly re related. Now, since we probably, I don't, but the manufacturer certainly does know the area of that little rectangular opening, with velocity and area, he can determine uh, volumetric units per minute. So let's see if we can get the top cover off. All right, I've pried, cut, whatever, to separate the uh, upper and lower pieces. In the process, I've loosened up the magnetic body of the meter. And I also, in the end, found out that this black case snaps at each end into the white case. It appears that nothing happened the whole way along here. I was most successful when I finally got in here and was able to pry these things apart. I think it was in like this, maybe. And I pried it, and you can see that extension snaps, snapped into the white case. Well having gotten this apart, things become much clearer. I don't believe I would have had to tackle these end caps at all. I believe they were probably installed 
and then there are six uh, projections. Let me get this position here, here, and here. Actually, I, I broke the middle one off here while I was screwing around. And all this does is snap into the case. Well, you had, I guess you would have to put these on first. And then snap the case on. So, we now have... Well, this is still tight. No, it isn't. Some, some goop in there. That had me fooled for a minute. I thought perhaps this thing was just filled with the uh, silicon cement. Certainly the meter is designed so that if somebody tears it apart, and I'm told that I used to do this a lot to our bronze and brass meter. It was held together with bolts. Actually, my dad had arranged for a playland in the basement and the only thing that I could tear apart was the water meter. But in those days you could put it back together. So I'll set these aside. Take this goop and throw it away. So now we have a plastic bodied flow meter. This is number six. I don't know if that's the tester or the maker. And the ends of the meter are not really secured to the case with black plastic or with the white goop. But each end of the coil seems to be held on with tape that is over top of this white goop. Then, as is very common, the register, and that's normally this part, is sealed in glass and potted in copper so that while this appears to be wet, there's some remnants of the leak, the case is, is uh, the register is sealed tightly. Now, Rockwell preceded census and Rockwell used to register used to advertise their sealed registered meters. They were entirely sealed. And that was a, a Rockwell selling point. So I intend to unseal this since we're not going to make it work. I did knock off this the three wire device that goes to the remote reader and you can see it's just a coil of wire inside the sealed register. And I'll bet this is just a coil of wire that sits over it. And the two coils act as a transfer or transformer or a coupling device to maintain the integrity of the seal. They take the seal very seriously. What I'm going to do now is try to work this copper ring off and take the glass cover off. I have worked my way the whole way around this and it's sealed with a piece of rubber. It goes the whole way around and this glass jar with this nice flat edge on the side of it was nestled inside that rubber and then this copper plate was crimped over. I'm not sure that this is a plug. There's no reason for it to be. This wasn't designed to be serviceable. There are a number of connections between the magnetic flow meter body. Some of these would be coil power and other ones would be sensing or looking at the voltage developed by the electrodes. The battery appears to be just like an oversized D cell. And I obviously it's not designed to be removable. It's securely held in place and takes up most of the space. 
a little bag of desiccant in here. And this thing was supposed to last 20 years. I should mention these things cost around $200. A, uh, a water company that normally buys a thousand at a time might get a pretty healthy discount. I should say with the old-fashioned mechanical meters, even the newest old-fashioned mechanical meters, although no, one, no manufacturer would, would state it, the average life the average time that meter still met its guaranteed measurement accuracy was about eight years. Uh, at about ten years, it was worth the utility, most utilities, with the increasing cost of water, to go out and replace the meter and then verify its accuracy or just do a trade-in with the manufacturer. That did two things. It, it allowed the utility not to have to certify the meter because these are point of sale devices. You're selling a commodity. It's like a gasoline or uh, for those people that have natural gas. It's a point of sale meter and, and it usually has to meet federal and state point of sale standards. Ironically in Pennsylvania parking meters are considered point-of-sale meters. They sell the parker time and so they have to be inspected by a state agency annually. A little bit trivia there. So this meter is guaranteed to hold its accuracy for 20 years and I think that probably if the battery were replaced it would last another 20 years. But who knows what the technology will be 20 years from today. I'm going to further continue to tear down this meter. And if I, if I get anything interesting, I'll append it to the video. Or maybe before I publish the video. So I've removed the uh, circuit board itself from the... Uh, plastic housing and it's connected to that coil that transfers remote information by a pair of wires. It's uh, connected and these are not removable. They're not intended to be replaceable. I did find out that the, the connection to the magnetic flow meter was a plug. Which probably makes sense. They probably don't hook the battery and, and this thing up until they punch down these terminals put this thing in a plastic case and then put this on top and slide the battery in and then as they mate the thing together that would put all these inside of this housing as they mate it together at the last assembly process just plug in the uh, wire from the mag the strip cable from the magnetic flow meter as you can see, it's all surface mount parts. They're very small. Uh, actually, they've, they've got test points here for the uh, entire display. And they have a whole bunch of test points all over here, which you would expect them to do with, it, with a bed of needles tester. To Before they assemble this thing, they probably check with a program and a computer, every one of those test points. I'm not going to try to read. If, if anybody really wants to know, they can uh, ask me. I'll, I'll attempt to get some readings off these little integrated circuits. So I may attempt a disassembly of this magnetic flow meter. And if I do, I'll post a part two to this video.